Hi guys, welcome to Clockwork Dandy Noodles. We are back with another episode of the case study of Vanitas. Before we get going, make sure you guys are subscribed. The channel at the moment, I am so sorry guys, it is a bit everywhere because the schedule ended up being a bit redundant. Things are swapping right, left, right and centre. There is a new anime starting tomorrow that I want to discuss. So you, again, keep your eyes peeled for that anime. It's going to be coming out as well. There's a lot going on. I will hopefully endeavour to get you, you guys a schedule up very, very shortly slowly working on it I'm in the middle of a very busy work week as well so life is very very busy but I'm finding time to make sure I get these breakdowns out roughly on time but thank you to all the new people hello and welcome if you have found me for the first time I am Becca head of the noodle bowl of clockwork dandy noodles the channel where I just enjoy breaking down anime talking about anime I really enjoy anime there's no one really in my real life I can talk about anime with so I decided to take to YouTube and found that I do enjoy talking about it with you guys there is a discord channel for you to get notified whenever videos go up on the channel that is also where I will be informing you guys of any changes anything I'm doing or you get to see if I'm d deliberating on doing something in particular I am currently considering if it's worth doing another set of playthroughs of a game of some sort lots of different things going on so if you do want to say on that matter if you just want to at least have notifications of whenever something goes up on the channel that is the best place to be so let's get going to episode three immediately treated to that open was absolutely gorgeous something i really really like especially the composition of this sequence is vanitas at the top and seeing the shadow with the vampire starting to unfurl its wings, those bat-like wings, I really like that symbology. I think it's fantastic because you've got the human vanitas standing upright, the correct level with us, the camera, and underneath him, hiding in the shadows, is more perhaps that true face of what lies with him. So obviously he's a human with a slight twist. I finally got the answer to one of my questions. So Vanitas is human, so he is human, I was doubting, but he has been imbued with the powers when he ended up being given the name of Vanitas, so he was imbued with the powers, so he has got some powers, so he's a human but with a bit of a twist, so he's got a bit of a salt and pepper mix on him, so he's been spiced up a little bit, a bit of a spicy human. We end up seeing the fight between the Hellfire Witch, going to be calling her that because it works a little bit better for me, and Vanitas setup is very very nice and the bluffing i i actually kind of think, thought he was gonna bluff I, I don't know why i just got the impression that he was bluffing and it works i'm very happy that it works he ends up purify the killer the killer from last time the man who is making rounds in paris gossip at the moment he ends up being purified right in front of the hellfire which to show look i can do this you didn't give me a chance to prove myself Here's me forcing you to see I can purify people with the power of the book. So the book isn't just bad. It, he's trying to show that, look, this book depends on whoever's holding it. So I am using it for good. It's a real nice wrap up. I think the way that this case, this kind of little fight with the Hellfire, which ends up wrapping up is quite nice because we get to see the killer case getting wrapped up at the same time. Thankfully for him, we have got the counts underlings who are there to actually witness it so he doesn't end up losing his case there because he wanted to prove that he could do it in front of the count and he ends up not being able to the hellfire witch also seeing him do it as well this pro showing that vanitas is curing somebody it ends up being quite a win-win situation and it's quite a clever way of doing it so very impressed that there's a nice way of crossing the two cases over there but what a twist luca ends up being kidnapped at, all according to plan of course and perhaps for the best, I think the Hellfire Witch at this point was really in a position to do damage to Vanitas. I think if she was to continue, Vanitas would have been in real danger. But it's all a setup. But interestingly enough, he does say you've got to stand just out of earshot. Just let him watch it, but don't let him hear what's going on. He figures out that the Hellfire Witch's weakness is indeed Luca. And that twist. Oh my goodness, that twist. It caught me off guard completely there. Vanitas literally making a move. That I wasn't quite expecting. I do understand what he's doing, though. He's He knows that Luca is her weakness, and he's kind of figured out that she is Luca's weakness, in a sense. So him doing that, and just as well, just out of earshot, that's why he kind of asked Noe to just, you know, out of earshot, you don't need to hear any of what we're saying, but he can see it. And all he really kind of sees from his perspective is him suddenly kissing her out of nowhere. 
And this ends up enraging Luca. At the end of the day, it ends up forcing them to withdraw, which is what we really wanted. We needed them out of the picture. And it's just a very clever way. Showing just more of the cheeky nature to Vanitas as well, more cheeky nature. But we start to get more and more twists going on. So the first twist, we see the vampire killer end up crumbling away into dust, into nothingness, with the big question of who killed him. And we get to see a glimpse of perhaps the culprit behind it. Thankfully, Amelia is now saved. For now, just for now, she's been spared her life. But Vanitas 2 is now under the Count's watch, which ends up being kind of in his favour because he suddenly has more patience to save and they end up getting their curses dealt with. So again, win-win, everybody wins, but the mystery starts to grow. We are introduced to the name Charlatan, which is now our next biggest mystery and perhaps scary to think that there's actually something else or someone but else behind the idea of curses. So there is something now out there that we are told is causing curses something which is able to bring a curse upon a vampire the music at this point i really want to talk about it because i really enjoyed it the music is distorted it's a bit distorted we're hearing the melody just kind of ticking along underneath as amelia even says i can't quite remember but i feel like i did so it's the idea of not being able to remember something which is quite familiar and that is what i feel like this melody is bringing because the melody to me and even though I haven't heard it before. It feels familiar. And maybe this is drawing back on my Pandora heart days of hearing the music. It sounds very familiar to that. It feels familiar, but I can't quite place it. I really like that little thing it's doing. It's probably unintentional. There's probably people watching this who aren't Pandora heart hearts. I've never seen it before, who don't have that initial connection. But it just feels like a very familiar melody, which I really, really enjoy. We are getting more and more bits of puzzle pieces coming our way. Perhaps the link with the teacher who ended up making Noe drink the blood and giving Noe the ability to read memories via a vampire's blood. Which leads into perhaps my favourite segment of this episode is the parade segment. It's really cool. I really like the way this is done. I like the visuals. It has a nice Phoenician feel to it. The use of masks, the use of the colours dead horses that they are riding upon it feels creepy at the same time you feel like you're in awe of what's going on I couldn't keep looking at the screen I wanted to know more I wanted to pick out all the little details so I couldn't look away even though you've got those horror elements all on the screen in front of you it's very very subtle the music as well feels a tiny bit European a little bit more exotic a bit more dangerous where Amelia in red is a great choice because red is the colour of danger, blood. At this point as well, she ends up becoming cursed. Her name is taken from her. She feels a little bit sacrificial. And we definitely meet the sh charlatan, somebody who is perhaps behind the stealing of names. There is somebody out there who is taking vampires' names and we don't know much about it right now. So our mystery is starting to deepen. Again, we glimpse Noe's serious side once more as he starts to realise that these curses are actually inflicted rather than just gained. So there is someone inflicting curses. And we saw via the flashbacks of last week as well that Noe has lost people to curses. And this is where we see his anger starting to grow. And I think the more serious side of him is a very strong side of the character. And it's something that I feel is an interesting side to him that I want to see a bit more of. We meet a new character this week, which is Dominique, and she is of the house Sadie, or Sade, I think they call it. This She introduces herself as Noe's fiancé, which ends up shocking the entire room, but it does turn out that they are childhood friends. So if you are a Noe stan up there, no panics just yet. I haven't decided who my favourite character is. I like Dante. Personally, I just like Dante for probably the wrong reasons because it's not even Dante. But I've got an affinity to that name. So Dante at the moment has my interest. I hope we do get to see more of him in the story. But I really like Dominique's design. I think it is fantastic. I love the tail coat. I am still in the market looking for a decent coat like that with proper tails. Because of my size, it makes it very hard to get hold of tail coats because initially in history, they are designed for men. But I like the military design. I like the whites. I like the purples. Purple is the sign of mystery as well. Wearing the white, very similar to Noe in that sense. Her hair is as long as mine. I like that. My hair is just getting completely unwild at the moment. It's just getting longer and longer. I do need to do something with that as well. I like it. I really like the character designs in this anime. 
We are told that there is to be a ball coming up where we might learn a bit more about our mystery Sherlatan. And then we are introduced to the mysterious barrier that links our two worlds and the world of Altus. Val- Valitas shows us the ability to cross the barrier by holding on to a vampire, which is very interesting. But he does also state that this isn't the first time he's been there. So it's not his first rodeo. I do wonder if maybe he's done it before with someone like Dante. I need some more information on that there, but little kind of things that I am pondering, which I'm very interested because if I'm starting to think these things, it generally means the anime is doing a great job at in- picking my intrigue. Vanitas understands that Dom- Dominique is trying to pull Noé away from him. And that is when we're introduced to Altus. And this is an inverted Paris. I love the fact that it's called Alt Paris as well. It's the alternative Paris. I absolutely love, 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 love the look of this place. This is absolutely gorgeous. We've got the red sky that we've been seeing in the flashbacks for Noé. We've got the red and those gold lights. Red again for danger. Again, these are the vampires under the red moon. So that makes sense to be using red. The gold as well. That really looks great. Looking at those reflections upon the water. It is beautifully drawn. I love the anime's art style for this anime in particular. Really do like the way that it's all composed. It kind of gets taller. You've got a building in the background. You've got the moon right behind it as well. Really do also like the sound of the episode this week. Really, really enjoyed that. Overall, I really actually enjoyed this this week's episode. I think it's great. We're starting to get lore. We're starting to get mystery. We've got a new name now. Who is the charlatan? Why are we getting this really spooky masquerade, the parade of the charlatan? Really like that. Going to be interesting to find out a bit more about this character in particular. And I also like the dynamics starting to grow between people like Vanitas, No Way, getting new characters into the mix as well. And now that we're introduced to a new location, really like it. Can't wait. I really hope we get to see more of the people like Dante, more of people like Dominique. Will Luca be coming back at any point? Lots and lots of stuff that I hope we get to see. So thank you guys once again for tuning in. Do bear in mind, I am not a, a manga reader. So please, please, please try not to spoil it absolutely excited to see this firsthand i'm i want this to stay a mystery i want to start working this out very very slowly so thank you guys so much i really hope you're looking after yourselves and make sure you're not overworking yourselves like i am at the moment but i will see you guys again next week there is a new anime coming out tomorrow if you were following me for obey me keep your eyes peeled for tomorrow have a great day guys goodbye